Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today we are checking out five new budget knives, five affordable knives. This is a knife from Free Tiger, and I'll put the name up on the screen, or you know, you can just find it using the links down in the description if you want the actual name. Here is the number, FT2103. But as far as the knife goes, it has a spear pointish blade in D2 steel, decent geometry, um, G10 handle that has nice grippiness to it with stainless steel liners that do have a lot of milling in there, using a crossbar lock. They did a great job with the detent on the crossbar lock, which a lot of companies fail at with crossbar locks. So good for them on that, especially on such an affordable knife. The, the crossbar lock does have enough grippiness, so it's very easy to uh, disengage. Lockup, I do feel a tiny smidgen of up and down, but it hasn't broken in yet. So, or at least completely broken in. I have flicked it, you know, a couple hundred times, but it, it might get solid. But either way, you know, if it doesn't, you know, it's such a budget knife. These locks are very strong, even if it does have a tiny, tiny, and it's such a small amount. Like this is something I would probably see on a Benchmade too. Uh, deep carry clip that's not in set and does have button screws. Um, ergonomics are really, really well done. This is very, very comfortable no matter what grip you're in. It's just very comfortable. It's a great size. Um, as far as like the shape and the handle complementing the blade, it's really, really well done. However, I do have a couple little nitpicks. Sharp control and plunge grind, I do not like that. Um, they, they it will create a smile. They did taper the plunge. I don't like the button screws, even though there is plenty of room under there. And then thumb studs are a little slippery. They're a little tight to the scale. They should have chamfered right here and gave, if they would have chamfered this right here, just right there, it would be so easy to get down to those thumb studs. And it's still easy the way it is. I just slip off of them here and there. But all in all, I mean, it's a cool knife. This would be a great beater knife, a great throwaway knife, something you're not gonna be scared to lose. Next is a knife from AM. Eight. This is the Gladiator. I do have the premium version of this. I believe it's an S90V, but it has amazing action. Um, this is a clip point blade, um, almost like a modified sheep's foot in a way, but it's a clip point blade running 14C 28M blade steel. This is a flat grind, but it gets down nice and thin. Perfect sharpening tool and plunge grind that also acts as a finger choil. We have green micarta scales and it has a steel stainless steel liner lock with good access to the liner. A deep carry clip that's inset with flat screws, G10 backspacer, very, very comfortable in the hand. You can easily choke up to for, for a little bit more control, but having the handle shape that it has, you know, it should be comfortable in just about everybody's hand. Um, the action is also another thing that, that's kind of addicting. The thumb studs are far enough away from the scales and they did chamfer the edge slightly, uh, but they didn't even need to because they're so far away from the handle that you have tons of room to get behind that thumb stud, whether it's the reverse flick or the thumb flick. Then the flipper tab, it's a little squared off, but it flips really, really well. So um, I do think that it kind of looks a little too straight. I don't know if that makes sense, but it, it works really well. So that's the important part. And I like the overall shape of this knife. I think this is a great functioning design or shape for most people. I really don't have much on negatives aside from maybe, you know, T6s. I wish these were T8s. The thumb studs could have some more grip on them, but they work so well that it's, you know, I don't even know if it'd matter. Um, but all in all, man, they did a really good job on this. The premium one's pretty cool too. Let's get to the next one. Now this next one is from Vosti. This is the Mink and it comes with a Kydex sheath with a tech lock. Love these belt clips right here because they're so easy to take off and put on um, and adjust. You can spin them, you can do basically whatever you want. It makes it very easy to carry a knife the way you want. But this one has Nitro V steel with a stone washed finish over the coating that they added onto it. Stay, um, Nitro V is a great stainless steel that has incredible toughness, good edge retention and great corrosion resistance. So having the coating on there will only increase that um, as far as the, the corrosion resistance. The handle is a blue, um, it, I think they say micarta, but it looks like, um, yeah, they say blue micarta. It looks like a rich light, but it's probably a micarta. It is slim, very slim in the hand. The handle it is perfect 
size from my hand as far as the length of the handle and you have a quite a bit of blade out there so this is going to be really good for pinch grips chopping down a surface slicing turning around cutting straps you might have a, you know, it, it'll work just fine but i don't know if i'd use it for that it just maybe the handle's a little bit thin uh, but this is great for EDC because you want them nice and slim like this for EDC. And you absolutely can cut backwards. I just want to be clear. But the manipulation with the knife in the hand to be able to switch different uh, angles of cutting is really, really well done. Good geometry. Um, it's going to slice really, really well. They have jimping all the way up here at the nose and back here. The gripping from the handle, um, you know, is really nice. T8 hardware in these pins so like you easily could make your own scales if you really wanted to but well you have to make sure they fit the sheath but all in all it's really cool my one complaint would be the sharp and strong plunge grind i wish that this had a separation from the plunge grind to the edge uh, give it a gap so that i have room to sharpen it in this case um, they did not so it will create a little smile where the ramp is for the plunge grind that little uh, spot right there, it'll basically, my edge or my stone will sharpen into that. Not that big of a deal. It, it, it's probably not gonna be that ugly. And with fixed blades, they're very easy to put uh, a choil in yourself, like super easy. So all in all, super solid knife, very cool. Next is another free tiger. This is the FT51 in K110 steel, which is basically a D2 steel. We do have carbon fiber handles here over the steel liners which just is a beautiful cut of carbon fiber really good quality carbon fiber um, no complaints on that i like the chamfers um, it's nice and comfortable in the hand or at least relatively comfortable in the hand i love the look of it the, the shape is badass i love a good harpoon harpoon drop point blade um, and the geometry, a little bit on the thicker side, but, but it's definitely still going to slice just fine, especially with a good edge angle. And because of that shape, you can easily do utility cuts. Um, the action on this is a little bit light on the detent. The detent definitely could be stronger. Um, I can easily flip it, no problem. And this does have a little bit of a jump right here, so you kind of want to drag down like that. Or you can, I guess, push button it if you want to, which both work very well, but I can easily fail it. Um, I wish the detail was just a little bit stronger. However, this would be something very easy to tune yourself, which I do have videos on if you ever want to see it. I have multiple videos on tuning detents, whether it's a button lock or a liner lock or a frame lock, but this would be an easy one to tune. These liner locks are basically the easiest ones to tune. Um, a button lock is really easy too, but the thing is though, is that there's the access to the lock bar is not very good. I do not like the access to the lock bar. It's a little tight in there. And if this was a stronger lock bar to push over, it might be uncomfortable. Um, in this case, I still don't, I don't like the liner. Um, I wish they cut this back right here. So they left me a gap to grab, to get it from the side. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I personally, for me, that bothers me. I do not like that. It makes it feel cheap. It makes it feel overlooked. The clip does have an attractive look to it with the knife. I don't mind it at all. It's just a regular uh, deep carry spring pot clip. Wish there was a time. Eh, I guess that's plenty of room. It's fine. And it is inset and it does have flat screws. So I'm happy to see that. But all in all, um, it's a cool knife. Um, I just, you know, like I said, the liner access to me, I wish the choil was a little bit better. I know it looks good, but this is a tapering plunge grind. It should be fine though. All in all, it's a cool knife. I just, you know, with, uh, it does feel like a budget knife though. That is one thing. Th this feels very much like a budget knife. That's going to be very affordable. They happen to put carbon fiber handles on there, which I do like, and I do appreciate, but it doesn't stop the knife from feeling like a budget knife, but for a budget knife, it feels like a decent budget knife. Now this next one, um, we're going to talk about because this is not a budget knife and the version i'm going to talk about also is not a budget knife but jack wolf knives has the benny clip point which i do have the the locking version of as well and i like it quite a bit i love the premium version these things are amazing but they recently came out with a steel um series the steel series makes the bolsters and the liners 
steel and the blade steel i believe is 14c28n this one is s90v with a dlc coating so this one's going to be quite a bit more expensive like 300 dollars However, the 14C Steel Series, they're, they're doing the same fit and finish, same tolerances, same grind, same everything. So it does, you know, mean that they're putting a lot of work into it and same hand, or well, not same handle material, but a little bit more budget friendly handle material, but good quality handle material. I believe some of it's even USA made, but my issue is, is that it's 14C in steel slip joint for 200 bucks. That to me is absolutely outrageous. I don't know if I've ever seen <laughs> a knife that expensive in 14C that had steel. Um, even D2, or sorry, not D2, even titanium frame lock knives in 14C aren't that much. Uh, typically they run about a hundred bucks. You know, you can get right now knives from, you know, even like Kubi, Tucson, and many others for under 140 bucks, under, under 120, sometimes even like under a hundred. And they have a lot of work put into them. Like they're really, really well done. So I don't see the price on this one. Um, I, I, I'm not sure where they got, where Ben got the price from because it is very hefty. $200 for steel and 14C, in my opinion, is just absurd. That is definitely uh, in my opinion, overcharging. I know he has a lot of overhead and, you know, and Hey man, I, I hope he can get it. I just don't see people wanting to spend that much. They would just go with the premium version in that case, because like, you know, steel knives with 14 C are almost always under a hundred dollars. Some of them are like $50 and under. So, you know, at least 65 and under. But I know they do put a lot of work into these and they are very, very well done. So I don't want to take anything away from that. This isn't the Steel Series one, but you know, he did say that they're doing all the same finishing work and everything, which I do know comes at a cost. Um, but man, but anyways, I just wanted to bring that up because it's kind of a, it's supposed to be, it should be a budget knife, but it is not. Um, I was actually pretty surprised when I seen the price. But anyways, there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.